Welcome once again to Commander by Danan. Today we're going to be doing a bit of a different video. This one is more of an essay or thought piece, as well as training for newer Commander players. It's also a Patreon-sponsored video. Huge thanks to Patreon and good friend Jiraiya for this video suggestion, as well as help with the scripting for a rather complicated discussion. As I've stated before on this channel, the two most powerful things you can do in Commander are card draw and mana ramp. Without both, there's a good chance your deck may not even function. Either that, or you're so slow that the game ends before you've had a chance to do anything. Overall, I try to dedicate at least 10% of my 100 cards to card advantage, and roughly half to mana generation. So the question we're looking to answer in this video is why aren't we running more cards that interfere with card advantage and mana ramp? Before we get started, I'd like to quickly ask you to like and subscribe. I've been very happy with the growth this channel has had so far, and I'm excited to see where we're going. If you're looking for ways to support the channel directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash One of the tiers is specifically set up for Commander. For only $25, I will build you a custom Commander deck based around your specifications, and even do a deck video on it. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. Remember, magic is a competition. The goal is to win. But magic is also a game, and the goal of any game is to have fun. Which is why interaction is just as important as card draw and mana ramp. You need to be interacting with your opponents. Destroying their creatures, removing artifacts or enchantments, or countering their game-ending spells. The goal of interaction isn't to lock your opponents out from playing the game completely, just to slow them down enough so that you can win. Or, at least slow them down so that you don't lose. So what types of interaction are there? My general rule of thumb is that you want to keep two things in mind with your interaction. The first is, you want to have the ability to remove any kind of permanent. Not always possible depending on your color identity, but it's important to have a variety of removal. The second thing to keep in mind is to remove cards that stop your deck from playing. So ask yourself, what is your deck's strategy? How does your deck win? If you're running a deck that relies on death triggers, you want to be able to remove a Ley Line of the Void or a Rest in Peace, as both of those shut your deck down. If you're playing Spellslinger, you want to be able to destroy a Damping Sphere or a Rule of Law so that you can actually play your deck. If you have a go-wide strategy, Ghostly Prison and Propaganda put a damper on those plans. The point is, keep in mind cards that you don't want to see hit the table against your deck, and make sure you have answers for them. But focusing your interaction entirely on removing permanence is too narrow. Resource denial is an extremely powerful and viable strategy in Commander, but it's one that many players don't wish to use. Which seems crazy to me. I've seen a lot of complaints that Commander is now a turn 6 format, with players either completely taking over the game on turn 6, or outright winning by that point. Resource denial, a form of stacks or control, can make a game that would otherwise end on turn 6 take twice as long. Cards like Collector Oof, Karn the Great Creator, or Energy Flux can slow the game to a crawl and force faster decks to play a more fair version of Commander. These are great inclusions in decks that have a slower strategy and want the game to last a few more turns. You can also run cards that increase the cost of spells like Damping Sphere, God Pharaoh's Statue, or Hanada Dawncrown. But Staxing Mana isn't the only thing you can do to slow the game down. One of the easiest ways to determine the power level of your deck is by how quickly you draw cards. Generally speaking, the more cards you draw, the stronger your deck is. But lately, Wheels, one of the cheapest ways to draw a ton of cards, have gotten a lot of hate, mostly due to Narset Parter of Veils, but Narset isn't the only reason. Wheels also draw hate because they're great at disrupting your opponent's plans. Think about it. If you cast a Wheel of Fortune against an opponent who just drew into their game-winning combo, you basically counterspelled every single card in their hand. Let's run some numbers on how powerful a Wheel can be. If you have two cards left in hand after wheeling, you have a net gain of five cards. If your opponents have six cards, they only have a net gain of one card. The way we're doing the math is that every card your opponents draw is a net loss for you, 
but every card you draw is a net positive for you. So that means after wheeling in the above example, you have a total gain of two cards. Additionally, every card your opponent discards is a net positive for you, while every card you discard is a loss. This isn't always the case, as sometimes your opponents want cards in their graveyards, but it helps to illustrate the point. This is part of why wheels draw so much hate in Commander, and you should keep this in mind with your playgroup. That being said, messing with your opponent's hands isn't limited to wheel effects. Siphon Mind isn't anywhere on the salt list in Commander, but by itself it offers a net 6 positive card advantage. It has no downside for you, and your opponents each have to discard a card. Now, wheeling later in the game when your opponents are flooding or don't have a lot of cards in their hand can benefit them more than you. It all depends on what you draw versus what they draw. But an early game wheel can be devastating. Whenever I cast a wheel on turn 3, I often end up winning the game. With Commander being a casual format, most players are pretty relaxed when it comes to mulligan rules. My family normally draws 10 for our opening hands, then puts 3 on the bottom. Many of the players at my LGS draw three piles of seven and choose their opening hand from one of them. But even the official rules, London Mulligan with a free one to start, means that you can usually sculpt your opening hand into something playable. And here you come, after dumping your mana rocks on the first turn or two, and force them to discard that hand and randomly draw seven new cards. Not to mention, you're now miles ahead on mana from all the ramping you just did. It's a powerful move and often leads to victory. Now, let's talk about ways to shut off card advantage. Narset Parter of Veils shuts down card draw. Rather than drawing 5 or 10 cards per turn cycle, your opponents are only drawing 4 at the most. She's not the only card that limits your opponent's card draw capabilities, but as a Planeswalker, most opponents don't have a way to remove it other than through combat damage. Players tend to run more creature spot removal than Planeswalker spot removal. Now let's discuss how mean Narset can be. When Narset Parter of Veils is combined with a Wheel Effect, let's go with Wheel of Fortune for simplicity's sake, and your opponents have no cards in hand, you have a net 4 positive card advantage. Assuming you have 3 opponents, your opponents each drew 1 card, and you drew 7. Also, wheeling when you have a Narset on board is considered one of the meanest things you can do in Commander, and will instantly make you the arch enemy. I don't recommend doing it unless you're at a high-powered table or a CEDH table. But Narset and cards like it aren't the only way to mess with opponents' hands. There are tons of wonderfully wicked black enchantments that keep your opponents' hands in check. Bottomless Pit, Oppression, and Painful Quandary are amazing at slowing the game down and ruining your opponents' days. Additionally, you've got cards like Yarox Fenlurker, Burglar Rat, and Disinformation Campaign. Each of these cards are pretty good in their own right, but in decks that can utilize them repeatedly, they become absolutely oppressive. At the end of the day, card advantage doesn't just mean drawing cards. It means having more cards than your opponents, which means Yarox Fenlurker is basically a two-mana Ancestral Recall. Flicker decks love cards with End of the Battlefield triggers, and creatures who force your opponents to discard are even more powerful when you can use them over and over again. Decks that rely on flickering creatures with powerful ETP triggers rely on those creatures to gain value, and when you repeatedly force your opponents to discard, you gain an insurmountable advantage. So many Spellslinger decks who normally like to play a draw-go strategy until they find their combo pieces are forced to interact early. This throws them off their game, especially when they're forced to spend powerful interaction pieces on cards like Burglar Rat. But probably my favorite piece of draw hate that's been printed in recent years is Urobrask, Heretic Praetor. Not only does he give you an extra card every turn, he also prevents your opponents from making the choice of when to cast their cards. If an opponent draws a negate, if no one else casts a non-creature spell during their turn, that negate just stays in exile. Useless. Decks that try to win the game quickly are often so focused on winning that they don't run enough interaction. I've noticed that the biggest difference between high-powered commander and CEDH is the amount of interaction in each deck. A high-powered deck focuses entirely on winning the game, running lots of powerful threats or combos to help them achieve victory. But CEDH relies on just a few game-ending threats or combos while running a ton of interaction. I don't want all of Commander to become CEDH, but more interaction won't hurt your deck. In fact, it'll probably make your games a lot more fun. 
what's your favorite piece of interaction? Thanks for tuning in. Once again, a huge shout out to my editor, Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, there's a link to her Fiverr page below. I post new Commander Deck videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or you can click here to watch additional videos. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again next time on Commander by Danon.